Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm here today to bang the table around and make the camera shake and also to start a reading vlog. So it's Mid-Month Book Bash in August. Mid-Month Book Bash is an event started by Doris over at Aldi Books where we try to read as much as we possibly can in the week of the month that is either on or immediately following the 10th of the month. So it is today, July, uh, August 11th. And so this is Mid-Month Book Bash weekend and we're going to be reading books. Let me see. I feel like I'm a little dark. Uh, I apologize. It's a little bit overcast out this afternoon. I do have the overhead lights on, but for whatever reason, it's making me a little bit dark. So that we're just going to go with it. And I'm going to talk to you about the books that I'm going to going to concentrate on this weekend. My goal for the weekend, I do have a lot going on. Um, I am, we have plans uh, to go out to dinner with friends this evening, and then we have a wedding to go to tomorrow. Um, and so, you know, it won't be just purely a reading weekend. I am working today. I'm just taking a little break to film this and I'm working on Monday. So yeah, it's not gonna be a huge reading time period for me these four days, um, but I am, hoping to read 500 pages. That's my goal is to read 500 pages. So what will I be reading from? The first thing I will be reading from is this ebook, Poverty by America by Matthew Desmond. Now I had read his book Evicted a couple of years ago. Really, really loved that book. Thought it was excellent. And this book, I'm about 100 pages into this ebook and it is also excellent and really enraging. But it is a book that I would say is really a straightforward nonfiction filled with facts. Um, it is not narrative particularly. Uh, so he's making a case, it's kind of a manifesto about why the U.S. Is, um, has such extreme poverty levels when we are the wealthiest nation on earth. Um, and he is going point by point and explaining why that could be. So yeah, very much enjoying this and we'll be continuing on with that. I am reading as well Unwell Women, A Journey Through Medicine and Myth in a Man-Made World by Eleanor Cleghorn. This is a book that I picked up on my travels in Europe this spring. I bought it in um, England and I am buddy reading this with Rachel and we will be having our first check-in tomorrow on the first 100 pages and I'm about 50 pages in so far. So I have about 50 pages to read before my first check-in on this. Nonfiction about um, health and women and how women have been treated in the medical field um, by the medical field for um, basically since the, the dawn of time. <laughs> um, right now in the first section of this book is uh, ancient Greece to the 19th century. So it's this first part, this the prologue and the introduction really sort of laid out the premise of the book and then this first section is is historical information about women in medicine so yeah very much enjoying this is very readable very very readable so i'm loving that and then my fiction for right now is this novel true biz by sarah novick which i started last month i'm buddy reading this with sean the book maniac and i have to read two sections of this for a check-in on monday so I had put this down because I had family visiting last weekend and Sean and I agreed to skip a week. Um, and we've been reading about 60 pages a week in this book. So I need to read like over hundred pages in this over the weekend. So this is gonna be one of my primary reads. This is a book about some teenagers who go to a deaf school and what uh, happens to them, how uh, the hearing world treats deaf people and the structures that are set up in order to, um, you know, that, that hearing people have set up and how that impacts people who are not hearing uh, in their day-to-day -day lives. Very, very good as well. And then last but not least, the book that I'll be concentrating on this weekend is another nonfiction. This is Dope Sick, Dealers, Doctors, and the Drug Company that Addicted America by Beth Macy. Um, this is a book that's been quite uh, popular over the last couple of years. In fact, I think there's a a, yeah, there's a series on Hulu about this, which I have not seen, but I recently read Demon Copperhead and um, I also read Empire of Pain by Patrick Radden Keefe and both of those books deal with the opioid epidemic, opioid epidemic in America and particularly Appalachia and this book is specifically about that and I've only read the first about 25 pages, I think. Yeah, 30 pages of this and 
already the parallels between this and Demon Copperhead are kind of blowing my mind. So um, very interested to continue on with this this weekend. So that's what I'll be working on and I will get back to you as soon as I've made some progress in something. <laughs> mid-month book bash my goal 500 pages and the first day Friday I read 81 pages I read in unwell women and I read in poverty by America so that's where I'm at on Saturday morning and hopefully I can do a little bit better today <laughs> to check in with you about a book that I finished. I do want to say that yesterday, Saturday, was a very busy day. So I um, had a haircut in the morning and then I participated in Sean the Book Maniac's bookish brunch on his Patreon channel. So that was really fun over Zoom with a whole bunch of lovely people all around the world. And that was a really fun time just hearing about different books that people are uh, reading right now. So that was really fun. And then I had a wedding and you will have seen clips from a very beautiful wedding setting. Um, it was a lovely wedding. We had a lovely time. So I was not able to read as much perhaps as I might have wanted to, but I did go, I did read over a hundred pages yesterday. So that was good. Um, and I did finish this book, Poverty by America by Matthew Desmond. And Matthew Desmond is the author of another book that I really enjoyed, and that is Evicted. I thought that book was really excellent about the housing, about housing issues in America and how um, poor people are really left without protection when it comes to housing in America. And this book sort of takes that one piece of the puzzle of poverty and expands upon it. It's a very short nonfiction. It is less than 200 pages, the text itself. The notes are probably another 200 pages uh, or pretty close to it. So it's very uh, extensively researched. Matthew Desmond is a university professor at Princeton, I believe. So he definitely knows of which he speaks. And this book is just a very good summary of the issue of poverty in America. He goes through all the different aspects. There's tons of facts in here. This is not um, narrative nonfiction by any means. This is a straight up, uh, very sort of academic in style look at a specific social issue. Um, but I think that the way Desmond presents his facts is really well done. And I very much appreciate, I learned so much from this book. I mean, I don't know how many highlights I made in this ebook, but I'm going to say it was substantive. Substantive. I, be, I bet I highlighted something on almost every page. 
so much information in here, so many facts and figures. I, it is definitely a book that I want to come back to and reread. Um, and then the last two chapters are really his synthesizing his ideas and not just his ideas, but thinking around how to alleviate poverty in the United States and how it could be done. And the fact of the matter is that there are steps that could be taken to make poverty a lot less of a problem without, you know, like it wouldn't drastically decrease the gap between the wealthiest people in America and the poorest people in America, but it would just make, uh, it would make things more livable for the people at the bottom end of the economic spectrum. And right now, you know, I think that a lot of us, especially those of us in the middle class uh, or the, you know, the upper working class type people, you know, we, uh, we're so caught up in our own problems and our own issues that sometimes we forget how difficult it is for the people at the very bottom of the economic ladder and the things that could be done to make life a lot more stable and secure for them that we take for granted. There are definitely security things that have been set up in our economy to protect the middle income bracket that do not help the poorest people in America. And we we all can look at the wealthiest people in America and say they need to do more of their share. Um, but we also could look at ourselves and say what structures are in place to protect us that are not protecting poor people poorer than we are? And how can we make sure that those people can benefit from those kind of safety mechanisms? So, yeah, I think it's really thought provoking and very important. And I would highly encourage you to pick this one up uh, if you have not yet read it or anything by Matthew Desmond. He's an excellent, excellent uh, person talking about um, the social problems here in America. So yeah, highly recommend. So today I, um, of course it's Sunday, so that's housework day for me. Um, although I am pretty caught up on my housework because after my house guests left, uh, I don't know if I mentioned I, I had family staying here last weekend. And so after they left, I did a lot of that cleaning. So I'm pretty caught up. I do need to do some baking and some other things like that. Um, but I have a new audiobook to start. Um, and so I will be starting that today. And I will also be working on a couple other things. And I will check in with you when I have made some progress. <music> So I read 208 pages on Sunday, which is awesome. I actually started two new books, which I will talk about at some point. The Reluctant Countess is a romance that I'm listening to on audio. And The Pillow Book is a Women in Translation month book. So yeah, I've got some good reading done on Sunday. <laughs> Um, so I figured I better wrap up the end of this mid-month book bash vlog and I feel like it's been a very successful weekend for me of reading extended weekend of course because you know mid-month book bash that's what we do we extend the time because we cheat and that's what we like to do so I actually started two more books I've read some part of every book that I had planned to this weekend which was very successful and I will show you my spread for my bullet journal before I end this. But I just wanted to mention the two new books that I started 
um, on Sunday and have read from the last two days. And it's uh, this one you can't see very well. It's The Pillow Book by Say Shonagan, which is uh, my first book for women in translation. It is also the book that uh, Britta has chosen to read off her 12 classics by women to read this year. And uh, so, yeah, I'm about... 40 pages into this one. There was an extensive introduction that I read. Um, and then uh, this first 40 pages, this is uh, a diary written by a woman at the end of the 900s into the early part of the 1000s. So like from 965 to like 1000 something, I can't remember when it ended. Um, but she was, that was her life, sorry, that isn't the, the length of the book, but that's when she lived. And she was a, a lady in the court, so she served the empress. And this is her, like, daily diary journals from what life was like. It's very um, humorous, witty, uh, there's a lot of poetry, um, but what I'm finding with these diary entries is how much they apply today. So they're very, uh, very much applicable to the today's world, which I find fascinating with anything written that long ago. The fact that there's still so many things that apply. I mean, obviously not the court customs and how the clothing or anything like that, but like the personal stuff that she talks about, like she, there's this whole section where she lists every day, she like lists things that are irritating or things that bring her joy or things that are beautiful or things that are delightful. And like so many of those things were so relatable. So yeah, very much enjoying this so far. Um, and I would highly recommend also just to say this um, is a Penguin Classic edition and um, I can't remember who the translator is, but I will write the translator's name up here. I think this is a really well done edition. I haven't read the other ones obviously, but I'm liking this one so far. <laughs> Um, and then the other one is my audiobook that I started on Sunday, and this is a romance. It's The Reluctant Countess by uh, Eloisa James, and it's book two in the Would Be Wallflower series, I think is the name of the series. And I'm very much enjoying it. It is a book that I'm reading, of course, with my romance buddy readers, Doris and Katie. And we are, our two main characters are Giles, Giles and um, Jasmine. And Jasmine is French. Her mother was English, but she uh, went to France and became the lover of Napoleon. Uh, and even though she was married to an aristocrat, and so Jasmine is their daughter. And um, she's come back to England to live with her grandfather and to like try to live a proper life. And she is going to balls and all that sort of thing and meets Giles who is looking for a countess but knows that he can't marry Jasmine because she has such a bad reputation and he's all about reputation but of course plot ensues between our two main characters and it's just really well done like Eloisa James got the dialogue right there's fun side characters the grandfather Jasmine's grandfather he's a great character uh, there's a lot being said here about um, gossip and the harmful aspects of gossip and reputation and how much that matters or doesn't matter and how you live your life and what brings you joy. Like Jasmine is a character that even though she's suffered quite a bit of hardship, she is determined to have joy in her life. And I just really, and she's also like not ashamed to like girly things like so often heroines in romance novels seem to feel like they have to eschew like pretty dresses and makeup and like things that are typically feminine for some reason it just seems like a lot of times the heroines are like not like other girls <laughs> um and i just love that jasmine's like yeah i like pretty things i like frivolous things like i'm not going to apologize for that it's just what i like um, so yeah, I like her very much as a character and Giles is, you know, the stick in the mud, grumpy, uh, Earl who, you know, is all about propriety and appearances and all that. And of course he's getting his comeuppance and he's having to examine his own things that he's done wrong and try to be a better person. And I like that. So yeah, very much enjoying that about 60 some percent of the way through that. So I will end this here and I will show you. Uh, a picture of my spread to show you that I did in fact meet my goal of reading 500 pages this weekend. Okay, so yeah, you can see I had a goal of 500 pages and I read 
from every book at least one day and I ended up with 616 pages total read for the weekend plus I completed a book so I'm calling that a win. See you next month.